Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to a brand new edition of Rave Diaries and Tower Block Tales with yours truly, Uncle Dogs in the hot seat. Um, as always, just want to start by thanking everybody that's um, been watching these videos, whether it's on this playlist or the Run Come Follow Uncle Dogs video diaries or both of them. Um, and thank you to all the guys that have been commenting and liking uh, and all of you subscribers um, to the channel, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love you all. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, why not? It's easy. Do it now. It's just down there, a little red button. See it? it? Costs nothing. Anyway, on with the show. So today, um, we're going back to the early 90s on today's one. Um, and to a club and an area that I guess isn't massively known for rave history, but in my personal story... It definitely, definitely at its place. Um, the thing I'm going to show you, this is my membership for a place called Ark, yeah? Now, Ark, it says Ark at Monroe's on this, yeah? But I'm sure the Ark that I remember going to was at Mr. B's in South End. So that's what we're going to talk to. For some reason, I've got, I don't know why. Maybe they was the same place. Um, I'm really not sure, but maybe it was called Monroe's after it was called Mr. B's. Um... I really don't know. But anyway, what I'm going to talk about is that little strip in South End uh, in my era of sort of growing up into rave. So I was 16. It's funny because on this year, it says date of birth, and I wrote 27th of the 1st, 74, uh, when I was actually born in 75. So I must have been 17, which would have 1992 this must have been. So that must be, I don't know. Anyway. Let's talk about it. It's called Eastern uh, Esplanade, I think. Is that right? Yeah, Eastern Esplanade, yeah. South End on Sea. And there was a strip of clubs there. On the other side of the club, on the front, was the seafront and the arcades. But when you slip round the back, there's about three or four clubs uh, in a line now. One of them was called Tots, Talk of the South. That was more like your Sharon and Tracy club. Then I think there was one in the middle, if I remember correctly. And then Mr. B's was the, the furthest one along, so um, kind of tucked in the corner. And it wasn't like, look, when I talk about Berwick Manor, uh, even though it wasn't the biggest rave club and it wasn't open all night, it was a proper rave club. But somewhere like Mr. B's, it was a club that, depending on what night you went down there, and even on the nights where they called them rave nights, they wasn't like hardcore rave nights, like the raves that were going on around that time. But what they were, they were a nice sort of crossover for people that were either just finding rave or for people like me that wanted to try and get their mates into rave more than their mates were really into rave. So being a Dagnum lad, I used to go to South End long before I could drive, like 16 years old, 15 even, one of your mates would have a car and going to South End was the thing. You know, it was like that the little thing we could drive around Everyone would be revving up their XR3Is and XR2s and all of that around the, around the circuit. But um, there was a little bit of a club scene now. I mean, South End, like every seaside town, has always had nightclubs and a club scene. And of course, in the early 90s, <coughs> rave music was very, very popular. So the Sharon and Tracy type clubs started trying to introduce rave nights or rave hours or things like that to their clubs. Uh, and going to Mr. B's, um, for me, like, I was already going to um, Four Aces, I was going to, you know, I'd been to Rain Dance, and I'd been to Living Dream, and I started going to, to proper raves and proper nights, but my friends at the time that I went to school with um, weren't really going to raves as much. I'm not saying they didn't, but they wasn't into it like me, and then I had other friends that were like, kind of 50-50 to it, so... Somewhere like Mr. B's in South End was a great sort of compromise for all of us. Um, but it definitely, definitely played its role in the evolution of rave, getting people from pop music to rave music. It, it bridged that gap because what clubs like Mr. B's did, they kind of pulled the average punter in off the street with dance music and they gave them rave music and a rave atmosphere for a little while. And people in there were were taking Jack and Jill's and, and getting up to mischief. But also there was other people in there just drinking beer like a normal night out on the seaside, uh, in a seaside town at a nightclub. But through that year of 91 going into 1992, it definitely helped to bring people out of pub into club onto rave, 100%. 
Um, so that's why I felt like it needed its own episode because th them sort of clubs don't really get the, the love that they deserve. I guess when you look at that sort of club, they're more geared towards that Sharon and Tracy type clubbing, you know, the pop music or whatever of that time. And for little moments in time, they try and cater for scenes. So they never really looked back on as important as a, a Paradise Club or a Four Aces or, a, you know, a Laser Drone or anything like that because they were rave clubs that served a purpose for the scene. But I do think places like uh, like Mr B's and, and probably called Monroe's, I mean, I'm not actually sure. I'm sure someone in the comments will be able to tell me what Monroe's was. But um, they definitely served their purpose in terms of um, helping to move rave music forward um, by a kind of, yeah, enticing people in on a pop rave flex and sending them out on a underground rave flex. I mean, I got to see some great people down there. What they would do is they would have a guest DJ or a guest PA around some of their residents. I think, if I remember correctly, Rush Puppy, maybe Mr. Flip, Roger Johnson, maybe. It was like that Berwick Manor circuit. They used to do Berwick Manor as well. They used to do that. Uh, place in South End, and maybe a couple of others, but they would have a big PA. But usually it would be someone like Brothers in Rhythm, you know, such a good feeling. So it was like a kind of commercial rave hit would draw the people in. But then you'd have people like Rush Puppy and that that were playing the proper rave stuff of the time. So yeah, it was kind of like a, a very clever way of marketing people through the door, hitting them with rave music and then enticing them back because they were falling in love with this new culture even though they wasn't sort of looking for that when they walked through the doors a lot of the time. So, yeah, shout out to all the South End Massive. Big up the crew that was involved in ARC uh, and all the other nights that were down at Mr B's. I hope I've got that right. I'm, I remember it being ARC, I'm sure. But if I've got my wires crossed here, the point I'm trying to make is clubs like Miss Monroe's and Mr B's and all of the others across the country that, that did that job of commercial rave to underground rave. Um, they deserve their place in history as well. The underground clubber would have looked at somewhere like this like it was horrific. But like I say, that, that time of my life, even though I was in, not everyone around me was in at that time. And it was a great way of all of us still going out. I got what I wanted. They got what they wanted. And over time, we all ended up in the raves anyway. I used to see them out of the bay. Even when I stopped knocking about with my original mates and I started rolling with, with me, uh, me mates that was to be me proper rave mates, um yeah it just kind of helped us to all go out and enjoy nights out together without having to listen to do, 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 do. Yeah, no not that bad but do you know what i mean it gave us a good night out for all to enjoy so yeah big up to mr b's crew shout out to all my south end massive all my essex gang uh, i'm sure that a lot of you lot would have been clubbing out there there was other clubs and obviously other stuff that was going on in and around south end and essex at that time but i just wanted to highlight this because it was important for me in my own evolution of finding my feet in the club land. So yeah, um, thank you for watching as always. Shout out to my Rave Diaries gang. Don't forget to subscribe as always. And don't forget to tell all your mates what we're doing over here on this channel. Send them all over, tell them to subscribe. And every time I put a video up, we can have a little chat about it in the comments underneath. All right, peace and love everyone. We're out of here. <laughs>